welcome dear brothers and sisters in the studio of the Sabbath School Department with the General Conference. With the help of the Lord, we have another Sabbath School lesson for you. And we're continuing the subject about brotherhood and uh, ethic, uh, ecclesiastic ethic. With the help of the Lord, we have a very interesting Sabbath School today. And we're together with our dear sister Raquel Orson. Before we begin our study, we wish to invite the presence of the Lord among us, having a silent prayer. Join us, please. Amen. <clears throat> Before I do this lesson, I wish to apologize for the video that had been posted in the previous uh, week. The audio of the video was not uh, good, and in certain portions it was not good to be heard. Uh, and we have removed the, the reason of it, and we hope that in the future such interference will not take place. May the Lord bless you, and we hope and pray for this uh, work which we are doing here in the studio, so that uh, we can improve our quality in the future. Amen. We wish to begin, as usual, with uh, the structure of our lesson. The title, uh, Fire, as a friends, Fire and Fate, uh, for itself is reminding us about the three friends and brothers, uh, Sedrach, Mesach and Abdenego. And uh, we're going to see in this lesson uh, what kind of experience they were going through and why is that so important that we have a good friends and good brothers and good brotherhood in the church and how unity actually is expressed in the time of difficulties, in the time of test. The first on the title, Openly Confess Their Faith, is related to the experience with fire. You can see that also in the background of our uh, lesson. <clears throat> then we have um, uh, the second on the title, Free and Walking in the Fire we're going to see uh, actually the continuation of the story and then we are coming to the other under title only uh, the fitters consumed and here we're going to actually apply uh, this story in a symbolic almost parabolic way and we're going to see that uh, the experience of these three men can be considered as a possible experience for us living in the end of time and also as a symbolic uh, metaphoric expression of the things or the, the experience of every Christian that is accepting Christ. The last under title with God with God's son we're going to see that this is what kind of experience uh, these three young men have made and uh, uh, which experience we can make with the Lord if we also are so firm and so um, steadfast in our understanding of faith and doctrine in our lives. It's very important to consider the entire lesson. The first part of the lesson is more the historical part or, or the textual uh, development of the story which more likely the church members know what happened. Even visitors, if they are Christians from other Protestant churches, they most likely have this story in their Sabbath school or Sunday school lessons. But it's very important that we concentrate more time on the symbolic understanding and how this is uh, really applying practically in our lives and what are we going to do if something similar happened in our lives. Let's go now uh, together in um, uh, considering uh, the text in details and let's consider especially the first question and we will enjoy also the comments of our dear sister. <clears throat> Although we are not told about prior uh, example of religious intolerance in the Babylonian Empire, what law was uh, enacted in the time of the Jewish captivity. We have, uh, if we can make a certain introduction to the lesson, we have uh, Daniel uh, actually revealing the dream of Nebuchadnezzar, Daniel chapter 2, and uh, after that the magicians and all the other uh, um, <coughs> employees of the king that were unable to interpret this, the, the dream of uh, the king 
now they come up to the king with a new idea that he need to have a, a golden statue is something that is exactly the opposite of what his dream was perhaps they were uh, intending to undo the uh, the prophecy about the the changing of empires and the future I don't know exactly what was the purpose but this have been proposed to the king and he followed their advice and that was uh, uh, the result of it now what happened in and what what actually Nebuchadnezzar did and what he commanded to take place in order to understand the situation where we are located now in this lesson we need to consider chapter 1 and chapter 2 of the book of Daniel um, we find Daniel with his friends in chapter 1 confronting uh, one test related with uh, the true worship the right way of eating and behaving and all together Daniel and his friends remain faithful in chapter 2 we find the second test that they went through also all four together and that was related with the um, process of interpretation of Nebuchadnezzar's dream and we know that again all four were united uh, with the same purpose and the Lord revealed to Daniel um, the dream and also the meaning of it but in this third test we find not Daniel we know according to the biblical report that he was in another business of the king so the three friends uh, we are without Daniel and this event is related with the revelation of the dream from Daniel 2 as was mentioned uh, the king opposed the prophetical vision of God and decided that his empire will never vanish Therefore, not only the head will be gold, but the entire structure of the stature. So all the body of this uh, big uh, image was completely from gold. But um, in an idolatrical uh, civilization as the Babylonian, this was a very uh, normal um, issue but not for these three friends and the order that the king issued related with um, this um, special um, commemoration that he organized to bow down and worship the golden image um, came in conflict with the principles of the true religion and so the three U Jewish um, ministers in the um, empire of Nebuchadnezzar were confronted with this situation and the way how they uh, react um, how they um, work together and stay together in order to remain faithful to God is the uh, main subject of this lesson that included a lot of teachings and instructions not only related with our faithfulness toward the truth but also our relationship in our um, friendship and brotherhood inside of the believers Thank you very much Raquel. It's interesting the second testimony here it says the history will be repeated, false religions will be exalted. Uh, <clears throat> force is the last resort of every false religion and we know that today this is very true especially in the western world in the northern states of the United States and Canada Australia and New Zealand it is very popular actually the pagan religions and Christianity is uh, almost extinguished 
and I was reading a, 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 a newspaper and an online uh, program and there was a prediction that in 20 years in Australia uh, the Christian churches will be empty and uh, it's very possible that this will happen and this is what happened also in the time of Nebuchadnezzar history will be repeated and the worship a pagan worship will be very fashionable very modern in the end of time let's consider the second questions who had the courage and power to resist the adult, the uh, adulterous <coughs> a command and worship and did this situation cause this young man to waver in their faith what can we say how the story now continue uh, in the biblical context exactly that this event is narrated to us in daniel 3 um, allow us to connect and to know much better these three friends uh, we know that they went through different uh, tests and trials before this um, situation. And we know that they were together because the truth, the principles of heaven, and the faithfulness to God, the identity with the true church of God was an element of um, homogenization in their lives and now uh, even if nobody else um, was able to say no to Nebuchadnezzar uh, especially because that was a dictatorship so to say no to the emperor and to a very great civilization uh, was connected with death sentence so even if our others um, religious um, uh, ideas or worshipers were present they didn't um, try to confront or to oppose the order of the king now Sadrach, Mesach and Abednego um, have been having that, that in the past and we saw here that the Ten Commandments were for them um, a question of life and death. And again, in these circumstances, they decided to stay firm and confess openly, uh, independently of the social pressure and the shame or the contradictory feelings according to the representation that they had in the empire to stay for the truth, to defend what they believe and to represent the true God even if nobody else was there. The answer that they give to the king have so an important meaning, especially because they present a completely different perspective of the uh, deity, uh, very um, difficult to understand for this idolatrous society. The first that they presented is that God is invisible, that he don't depend on matter, and that we cannot manipulate God and that our faithfulness to him is independent of the circumstances and that God is about human knowledge or wisdom and even if uh, God don't deliver them um, the king need to know that they are not going to worship this golden image so these different attributes of the presentation of God in front of this idolatrous king was so impressive that revealed to us the clarity, the commitment and the identity that they had with God as their personal God. That no matter how many people were present, 
no matter if life is near to the end, they will stay. Thank you very much Raquel, it's uh, very interesting also the story and uh, the, the application, the practical application that we can learn uh, out, of, out of it here, the testimony, the second testimony again, and uh, Prophet Ekin says, uh, <clears throat> as the three Hebrews stood before the king, he was convinced that they possess something that other wise men of his kingdom did not have. And this is very important, brothers and sisters, because if we have the Spirit of God, the people understand that we possess something differently, something more than other believers, than the other churches. However, when the test comes, now the king was very curious to see how they will react. And this is in continuation, the testimony uh, says, they have been faithful in the performance of every duty. He will give them uh, <clears throat> another trial. If only they will uh, signify their willingness to unite with the multitude in worship the image, all will be well with them. And this is what happened uh, many times, uh, mingling with the world or giving up a little bit of our principles. It makes our life easier and we don't need to, uh, to have any confrontation with the world. If that is about our diet, if that is about our dress and appearance, uh, we can very easily give up our principles just to mingle with the multitude just to avoid all the, all the difficulties and confrontations. However, these three men, they took it very literally, the ethic, their religious ethic and principles, and they do not want to mingle with the multitude. They wanted to be distinguished. They want to be the unique ones that follow the Lord. And this is what God expects from his people today. Let's go forwards and see how the story uh, continues and what we can learn out of it. And question number three says, is there any indication that they complain it or express grief to God at having to face such a terrible test? This is something that happened very much uh, in, uh, with us. Uh, if I am sick, if uh, let's say a believer be, uh, I have a cancer, we usually say, what is going on? Why did that happen to me? If I am worship God, if I am faithful, I'm supposed to be protected of any trial and any test. And similar to this young man, they could say that. However, they didn't. And uh, the statement in this case is very, very interesting and very important. What do we notice in this question, Rick? They didn't... Um wait for any clemency or exception or try to convince the king, they uh, pronounce a very clear statement. They express clearly what they believe, what they go, are going to do independently of the circumstances and about the decisions of the king. And that is something that is only possible when um, we, as human beings, have a clear definition about our belief that don't depend of personals, personal advantages or um, feelings or emotions that are wavering our circumstances. According to this um, statement that was given to the king, um, he was uh, very much um, disappointed with the reaction of these three um, officers of his empire. And we see that he was so furious and so angry that he commanded that the furnace will be um, heated seven times more than regularly will be. So he was out of control completely. For him was an <coughs> inimaginable situation that these three, three officers will confront him and will say no to him 
for something that he has commanded. Uh, even if they respond um, according to the courtesy and respectful in their words, the determination that they show question the authority and the command of the king. And this show us first that they have a firm faith, a deep conviction in a very um, sensitive conscience that don't allow them to compromise the truth, but even uh, to offer their life in order to represent God according to the right light. This um, expressions that we have in Psalm 9 and Psalm 37 show us that God look with a special admiration and take care of the faithful ones um, according to his infinite wisdom and especially the respect uh, to the authority of God is impressive when they confirm that even if they will die still they will believe and offer their lives to the only true God. And that is only possible when we are able to be above the circumstances and independently of human judgment. Thank you very much, Raquel. It's interesting, the Bible verse that is in previous question, I think of question number one it was uh, the beginning of the story when uh, Sidrach, Mesach, Mesach and Abednego uh, <coughs> answered to the king, uh, we have a God that can deliver us uh, from you, hence, but even if he does not, we will not obey to and uh, not bow down uh, to the statue. And that is very important. We can expect delivery from God, we can expect help from God, but sometimes, even if this help does not come the way as we expected and the way as we desire, we still keep our faithfulness because we are faithful not because we expect God to deliver us, but we are faithful because we love God, because we want to be faithful, because we, are, uh, we have the Spirit of God with us. And this is the right attitude we need to have when we are in such a test and trouble. Uh, the same was the case with John the Baptist. If you remember, he, uh, he expected that Jesus, by uh, coming in power, he's uh, going to deliver him and he's going to punish all those who are um, disobedient. Uh, however, the things turned differently than he expected. And he was kind of disappointed. Uh, why? Because uh, this attitude is very important. If God wants to deliver me, it's he will deliver from the hand of the most mighty king on this earth. And if not, we still will be faithful. Let's go forward and see the next question for what uh, we can understand out of it. <clears throat> what effect did the uh, raging heart, uh, so hit of the fire uh, have on the young man in their clothing? Now, the king made the furnace seven times hotter. Uh, we have a kind of uh, a picture in the background. Uh, it, it could be imaginary such a fire that they have uh, seen there. Uh, nobody can come even closer to it. Actually, those who drove the young man into the furnace, they perish because of the ter terrible heat that they were facing. But what happened with this young man that were so faithful to God? We see that God revealed his power and mighty to the king of Babylon in, in, a, in a process. So as was mentioned, when the three um, uh, faithful um, men were thrown inside of the furnace, the ones that throw them die because of the heat. But now, uh, even if this was a, 
an extraordinary event that uh, contradict any logic and confirm a divine intervention in favor of these three men, um, a second level of convincing evidences were showing to the king when he was extremely uh, focused on this uh, furnace and in an astonishing way confirm that were four people inside of the furnace. When he even asked, did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? And now they are loose, and they are walking, and they are not hurt, and they are four. So we see here something very important that teach the king exactly what God wanted to show this emperor through the faithfulness of these three men and that was first that the power of the nature is under the dominion and the power of God second that independently of any human and earthly power God and divine God is about everything that all the other um, such gods were not true God. Beside that, this fourth person um, came to be together with those that were faithful to him. And not only that they were not burning, but they were uh, loose and they were walking like to be in the furnace um, like in a regular room and that was completely uh, impossible according to human understanding and human reality so a divine intervention was not possible to be denied in this specific moment now what we can learn from that is that God can do and will be doing special and extraordinary things when the faithfulness and the obedience of his people correspond to the miracles and even exceed the human understanding. And this helps us also not only to be uh, motivated and encouraged by the example of these three faithful men, but also to understand the way how we are to ask God for help. The will of God was um, regular understanding in the life of these three men they knew what is right and they have so uh, unconditional faith in God that even if what they expect or wish didn't come to be realized or to be true their faith will be about this because God was first and the most important in their lives. Thank you very much Raquel. Very interesting is the story and we see here the furnace and uh, it is a kind of a, a very interesting symbol because uh, every uh, single Christian that is in a uh, living a life of Christian it's uh, in a uh, kind of a furnace and we all burn into the temptations and uh, aggressive attacks of the enemy and that's why it's uh, very important to understand how the faithful man behaves and sometimes people say but well, how is that possible that miracles happen in the Old and the New Testament and perhaps nothing or uh, no miracles have happened with me uh, until this moment uh, if we uh, 
accommodate our, our, our lives with the, with the world and we mix with uh, the multitude, obviously no miracles will happen. But in the moment we take stand, we are firm and we do not move uh, from the standard of God, uh, then, first then, uh, God can interfere if that is according to His will. And that's what happened with these three men. They stand uh, very firm and, uh, in their faith and uh, their friendship and their brotherhood help them that they really does not move out of uh, this uh, uh, commitment. Another important issue is that these three men uh, or actually were accompanied with angels of, uh, of God or by Jesus Christ and this is not just in the furnace but they had that fellowship actually all the time and that's what we need to have and that's what uh, we can learn also here in the coming questions. Let's consider the question number five. <clears throat> what alone was consumed by the fire setting the young man free? Considering the spiritual uh, letter of sin, what hope can we have in being completely set free from them and with whom should we constantly be in communication? What can we learn from this question, Raquel? We admire very much the result of this event and how um, these three men um, uplift God and His power in front of all the Babylonian Empire. But this was a process and this don't happen all of a sudden. We have in chapter 1 and chapter 2 of Daniel the preconditions in order to remain faithful in these circumstances that we are dealing with in this lesson. So the results were about all expectations. The first element is that the king realized a divine intervention took place and he ordered that they will be um, free, that they will be um, uh, gained out of the furnace because what the king was saying was a revelation of God, not only of himself, but also of his power and identification of God with his faithful servants. And that is extremely interesting. Um, in the moment that they decided to remain faithful to God, God remained faithful to them. And that is something that needs to be clear in our mind. Uh, God say, I will never leave you. Uh, and if we never leave God, He will err in all circumstances, no matter what come upon us, be with us. Even when we cannot understand and we cannot see the final stage of the uh, moment where we are in, but through faith, that work by love is how the true God was presented to the most powerful king at that time. Thank you, Raquel. Actually, the symbol of fire is a very uh, popular one in the Bible. We're facing that in several places. And all the believers need to have a faith purified by fire. That's what we found in Revelation chapter 3. Also, with it's uh, the message to Laodicea, we need to have a gold purified by fire. And these three men were purified by fire. And uh, that's how we are going to be purified. The fire is also a symbol of the test, symbol of the difficulties we're facing in, um, in our lives. Uh, and not only uh, this, uh, it's, it's not only difficulties, it's not only uh, troubles and trials, but this is uh, a blessing connected to it. And it w was interesting what the, this three man was thrown into the fire, they were purified. Everything that didn't belong to them uh, was burnt out and disappeared. Also, and, 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 
and these ropes that were tightening them and limiting them, they burnt out. And the same way, if we are drawn into Christ, we will be purified and we will be set free. And we will be set free from our sins. We will be set free from our uh, trials and temptations because God will plant in us His divine nature and that is how uh, this miraculous process will take place. In the same way as Nebuchadnezzar was uh, totally astonished and everybody who observed this was astonished. In the same way, everybody will be astonished when he see our conversion and our dedication to Christ, how this will free us from sin, from the bandage of sin and uh, drug addicts and, uh, and people that are addicted and drugs and alcohol and tobacco and different things they can be set free you can be set free brothers and sisters whatever addiction or whatever difficulties you have god can burn all these bandages uh, that are surrounding you and you will be set free as the bible verse says here if jesus makes you free you will be free indeed the six question says do you think that the fourth brother which is in that case uh, Jesus in the fire was with them only in the critical circumstances or that he constant presence with them was the secret of their wonderful unit and success and how may we be uh, similarly <coughs> united as brothers and make such experience together now is actually the reason of the lesson it what have to do the brotherhood uh, in case or the, in the time of test and time of examination we know that similar times will come soon and to, is it the brotherhood something important in this case the uni the unity based on the truth and the values of the principles of heaven were the elements or the links that uh, connected the hearts of these three men together. They have proved that in the past and now they, um, through the power of God, remain all three faithful. For sure this um, human connection, this um, friendship um, and the experiences that they went through um, since they were taken captives uh, from Jerusalem all the way to Babylon during the training as students in the Babylonian um, institutions and after also as officers from this empire, um, uh, commit them one to another in the print in the idea to keep the truth in their personal life and the same purpose, the same values were revealed for all three in the extreme circumstances of their life as we see here and this help that provided one to each other proof that the connection from a true friendship is given by God, especially because this fourth uh, person that King Nebuchadnezzar saw in the fire furnace was Jesus Christ, that were in the heart of, the, of these three men and now appeared to them in a a visible and touchable form. And in these circumstances, they become even one in the plurality of ideas and thinking through the truth and the values of heaven. Thank you very much. It's very interesting. Uh, it's in the second testimony says, I would like to show that here. Christ identifies his interest with his class. He is not ashamed to call them brethren. There should be hundreds where there is now 
one among us. It's interesting that Christ is not ashamed to interfere and deliver anyone that is not ashamed to confess him. It is uh, uh, both, uh, the, the blessing goes both ways. If we are not ashamed to present Christ in front of the world, if we are not scared to, uh, to keep our identity and do not mingle with the majority, with the, uh, with the multitude, and uh, we uh, remain f steadfast in the principles of God, then Christ is not ashamed to call us brethren. He's not ashamed to interfere. Even visibly, in this case, uh, uh, he appears so everybody can see him. And he was talking with his uh, brothers or his friends inside of the fire. The same way, dear brothers and sisters, if you are willing to enter into the fire, you will see Christ there. He will come and he will uh, hug you and he will... Uh, give you uh, 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 the Christian greetings because you will uh, you will be one that uh, deserve and you will be uh, the one that Christ really will consider his brother somebody that reflect his character that have the divine nature also as he have it and this is very important brothers and sisters Christianity is not just a theory, but it's a real stuff. And the real thing reveals in the time of test. Let's see what uh, we can learn of the last question seven of this lesson. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> what praise to God did the king express after seeing that not even a hair of this faithful man had been uh, single? What happened with this for men, we know, but what was the reaction now in the pagan king that is that have been so furious, so angry? Sometimes we try to avoid the anger of the people by making compromises and the truth, but this young man didn't do that. Then what happened? Everything that we do have consequences. When we take the right choices, when we um, put God on the first place in our lives and when He is the superior uh, authority in our decisions and the one that decided uh, what to do and where to do it, then um, this will not remain uh, like a regular or normal thing. In this case was an extreme situation and the result the result was also corresponding to that especially because um, with the same intensity that Nebuchadnezzar revealed his fury and anger toward these three men the description that he gave was that they were servants of the most high God and, and, and this says something very impressive in front of all the princes, governors, captain, captains, kings, counselors and all that were together gathered. That is no other God beside the God of the three Hebrew men that are higher than him. And because the witness and the testimony that they give was public, also now the king publicly express orally and in written form the superiority of the God of these three Hebrew men about any other one. And mention also the experience and the way he understood what happened uh, in front of him and it's uh, uh, very um, uh, impressive that first he defined this fourth person as a son of the gods and after he defined him as an angel because say who had sent his angel and delivered his servant that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies 
that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. So even he realized that is under this supreme authority, and that is represented in the true God that these three men, Sadrach, Mesach, and Abednego, um, preach and live by. So what we see here is that even if we think that there is no hope and there is no solution and our lives need to be sacrificed, this will be not in vain because the Word of God, His principles, His authority and the relationship that we have with Him cannot be compromised. Never, ever. And this is proof through the um, daily trials and tests that we go through. The three men were not confronted with this situation for the first time. They were together in faith, in action, and in faithfulness. And God revealed himself to them according to the same principles. And this same experience expanded to the um, mind and heart of the king so that all the territories of the empire uh, receive the same message. It's interesting that the king Nebuchadnezzar did everything possible to crush the faith and customs of the captives. He teach them his ways, he teach them the wisdom of Babylonian, he gave them the food of Babylonian, he gave them Babylonian names, which we have here even in the Bible. <clears throat> and the reason was to melt them and distance them for them idea for their identity. And uh, <clears throat> according to the report, uh, biblical report, it seems like all other young men that were a captive from Judea and from Israel, they melted. They gave up their identity, but these four men, including with Daniel, they didn't. Why? Because they communicate with each other. They supported each other. We know that where two or three are together, Jesus is also with them. It's so important that we support each other in the faithfulness. Support each other to not give up to the multitude <clears throat> and uh, to become faithful and to remain faithful in what we have. And the other testimony which we, uh, we understand here is that the world actually is expecting to see if we the one that preach about uh, Christ and about everything and the miracles and the purity and sant sanctification and justification, if we are the one that will jump into the fire when the time comes. <clears throat> and uh, if we don't, then the, all the words we have said have obviously no power and uh, actually the world is tired already to hear uh, sermons he wants to see an example of faithfulness and that is the most powerful sermon the most powerful uh, preaching that we can give uh, to the world if we are faithful so dear brothers and sisters being good uh, courage and uh, uh, enjoy this Sabbath school lesson <clears throat> the Lord can make you free and even if you jump in into the furnace of fire, the Lord will be with you, like with these three faithful uh, brothers in the faith. Amen. May the Lord bless you. Enjoy the Sabbath school lesson. And with the help of the Lord, we can see each other the next week. Amen. Amen.